According to this data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average parent spends 68% of a 24-hour day at work or sleeping. This means that there are only 32% of the day that could possibly be spent with their children. Take away the time their children spend in music, dance, gymnastics, sports, etc., and parents have very little face time with their children. Who influences the children the rest of the time? The community that surrounds them, including their peers and teachers, and media social media, entertainment companies, television conglomerates, and the like. I'm Elaine Plybon, the graduate teaching assistant for this course. In this video, I will discuss things that I saw and how I interpreted them during my time as a high school science teacher. I will not be quoting a lot of research, well, just a little, so that you can consider your own take on these observations and possibly generate your own questions. The influences of society on adolescence is powerful. The observations I made and continue to make in the education system are what have inspired me to pursue research in this area. I began by focusing on the influence of society on the development of girls, but have realized that society plays an important role in how each one of us view ourselves and our position within the community. One of the first pieces of research I learned about was attribution theory. Attribution theory takes a look at how an individual perceives their successes and failures. They can either internalize it by thinking their own ability or effort contributed, or they can externalize it, thinking that someone or some force beyond their own control was the reason for the success or failure. Interestingly, attribution theory posits that boys and girls tend to explain their successes and failures in different ways. Boys tend to, to explain success internally, saying things such as, I'm smart, I'm really good at this. When boys fail, they will most often externalize it, saying things like, the teacher hates me, or I had really bad luck today. On the other hand, when girls are successful, they usually externalize it saying things like, the teacher likes me, or the one that I said most often when I was a kid, I was just lucky. When girls fail, unfortunately, they most often internalize it, saying things like, I'm no good at this, I'm stupid. So girls attribute their successes to external reasons and their failures to internal, while boys attribute success to themselves and failures away from themselves. What did I see in my classroom? I did recognize these attributes in my students, though I can say that it was not always split among gender lines. I would like to revisit attribution theory in the 21st century, now that our understanding of gender roles and gender identity have blurred the line society once drew in the sand. I also observed interesting tendencies among my students that I believe could stem from socialization and the influences of media and pop culture on adolescents. As a science teacher, I taught subjects they had long ago lost interest in. Somewhere between fifth grade and ninth grade, students come to think that they don't like science. Whether this is really true or whether they believe this because they think they are supposed to not like science would have to be examined. Another interesting observation is that if a student's first exposure to science looked like this slide, they shut down. I came to realize that young people in our society believe that they should already know everything. They have lost sight of the fact that education is about starting off not knowing anything and that they can learn the content. Now, they believe there is something wrong with them if they look at something like this slide and don't understand it. Teachers hold within them the power to influence a child for the good or the bad. One comment can devastate a student without any ill intent. I can remember one day in my classroom when I said to someone, I know, man. The use of the word man for me was part of my vocabulary growing up. We ended sentences with man just as much as young people today end sentences with, so, yeah. The girl that I said, I know, man two, happen to be one whose gender identity more closely related to what we perceive as male, and she was immediately offended. I'm not a man, she said. I explained to her what I had meant, but the damage was already done. 
What a child perceives to be true is just as powerful as what really is true. I'm not saying that all teachers destroy young lives. What I am saying is that it is important for all of us, not just teachers, to read the signals and hear the words that our young people are saying and immediately address any issues that we may have caused by our words. It's a great learning experience for us and for students. I remember my first day walking into a ninth grade biology classroom thinking that I had walked into the wrong class. At home, I had a 14-year-old daughter who did not look at all like the girls I saw in that room. Those girls could easily have passed for seniors or older. The striking difference in the standards for dress between communities is interesting to think about. The striking difference between the standards many years ago and those today are even more so. The strong importance young people place upon their dress is not a new phenomenon. I can remember as a child feeling like an outcast because my mother sewed everything I wore. The difference in acceptable styles over the years, however, cannot be denied. I saved my observations specific to gender for last. I believe Dr. Kirk may have actually had this in mind when she asked me to create this video. As a science teacher, I worked in an academy whose first floor housed the engineering and technology or STEM pathways. As I walked down the hall of the first floor, I would look in the observation windows and see very few girls. There was one in this class, two in that class, and so on. We often lost girls to other floors at semester, and the most cited reason for changing career pathways was a feeling of being alone with a bunch of boys. Myself, another teacher, and a vice principal decided to try to do something about it, so we created an organization for the girls on the first floor. Our idea was to provide a sense of community among these girls, so that instead of feeling like they were alone, they would feel like a part of a community. Understanding that although they might be alone in that room, there was another girl in the next room feeling the same way. The organization was successful beyond anything we had hoped for. After just a few months, I heard girls making comments about the way their teachers talked to them because they were girls and they began to feel empowered to speak up and to continue on their chosen STEM career pathway. Because of guest speakers we brought in who were successful women in STEM careers, our girls began to understand that, yes, it will be difficult, but we can succeed in this area. I taught students from many different cultural backgrounds, and I could go into a completely new video about the observations I made related to cultural and socioeconomic backgrounds, and there's a lot of research out there about this topic. I would encourage you to explore the research on your own and become aware of just how powerful socialization is to young people. I will end this video with two stories. Which one would you prefer to be more common? My first story is one about message. A couple of years ago, one of my girlfriends posted a note on Facebook to me and said, can you believe this, and attached a link to a blog post. The blog post was written by a, literally, a rocket scientist at JPL Laboratories, and in it he was talking about the woman who had most influenced his career path. That woman was his high school, science her high school chemistry teacher, and I will call her Dr. B. Dr. B had encouraged him and he felt like that if it hadn't been for her he may not have become a rocket scientist. The reason why my girlfriend posted can you believe this with the blog post was that this was our high school science teacher. Our high school chemistry teacher Dr. B had treated us very differently. Our experience in her classroom was very different from the one that the rocket scientist had experienced. As women in her classroom, yes, her classroom, we were discouraged. We were not allowed to touch the science equipment. We were often tasked with being reporters, writing down all the information as the boys conducted the experiments. Because of this discouragement, I would leave that classroom at semester and I would not return to a science laboratory for 20 years. I ended up pursuing a career in science after that 20 years. Can you imagine what I might have accomplished had I not been discouraged and not been in a science classroom for 20 years? 
My other message is one of empowerment. Remember that girls organization that I talked about that we had created? It was called Girls of Technology or affectionately known as GOT. We would often take the girls on team building activities which were designed to build their sense of community and get them to know each other. One day we went to a ropes course and I can remember as we turned a curve in the pathway there was this giant wall standing there and when we first saw the wall the girls started saying things like that wall is so huge we're never gonna make it across you can't make me climb that wall and things like that once we explained to them that yes they were going to climb the wall and that further we were not going to go any long any further in the course and we weren't going to have lunch basically until everybody had crossed that wall individually the picture here that you see was their solution the girls as a community helped each one of their peers one by one climb that wall their sense of empowerment after this activity was so strong that one of the girls that's in that picture went on to become a speaker in front of education professionals even while she was still in high school she would talk about that wall and what it meant to her and how she had realized that day that even though there were going to be barriers to what she wanted to to accomplish in life that she could accomplish it and that she didn't have to do it alone and it was okay to ask for help I hope that you have enjoyed this video I purposely did not go into long discussions about how this all relates to what you're learning in this class what I hope that it did was spark an interest and get you to think about some ways that these observations that I made relate to the information that you're learning in this class. I would encourage you to think about how it relates to you as well and your own experiences.